Years ago, I witnessed something I should not have. For the sake of discretion, I will adopt the name Sarah for this post, although it doesn't really matter. I was born and raised in a small town in Germany, where exactly is irrelevant. I am certain that what is happening isn't just limited to me or to my country, which is why I have decided to make this post. For some context, I live alone with nothing but my loving grandma and our dog. We live in a small apartment consisting of my grandma's bedroom, my own room, a larger living room, a very small kitchen, and an even smaller bathroom. This will be important later as I detail what exactly is happening. Furthermore, important to understand is that our apartment is built with a halfway type system where you have one long, thin hallway, with the entrance on one end and the small bathroom at the other. Four doorways leading to the remaining rooms I have listed prior. The living room also has a door leading to a decent sized balcony. The balcony can be overseen through a very large triple windowed setup we had recently installed, courtesy of our landlord, especially at night. Half the living room would now be cast in a dark blue shadow, mixed from both moonlight and the night itself. It was the home I grew up in, with a beautiful view out of every window, and only a handful of morally questionable neighbors to irritate me. I was happy here until precisely two years ago. Two years ago, June 2021, I was awoken from my safe and deep sleep when I heard a weird noise coming from my window. Now, we live on the second level of our building, and while we do have a tree behind the house, it's way too far away from any window to disturb us. I was, for obvious reasons, confused and irritated, but didn't think much of it at first. However, I personally struggled with keeping up on my hydration on a serious medical level. So, whenever I wake up, I have this unquenchable desire for some water or fruit juice. Anything to stop my stomach from aching. Feeling the pain once again, I decided to quickly go through our hallway, into the kitchen to fix myself a quick drink before heading back to bed. At night, our hallway always unsettled me. Sure, I had the gorgeous beam of light coming from our hallway lamp to protect me but the switch was literally on the other end of the hallway. There was something off about this hallway at night. Not necessarily the darkness either. Due to my grandma being claustrophobic, we leave pretty much all the doors open. Walking through our hallway just makes you feel exposed. There's a doorway providing a corner to hide behind every two steps. Brave as I was, I carried on getting to the kitchen and pouring myself a nice cold glass of water. And there it was again, the noise. A tapping of some kind, I wanted to chalk it off as some animal. Maybe a bird having interest in our windows. But I got curious. This led me to making the biggest mistake of my life. I decided to listen for the tapping, trying to pinpoint the exact origin of the noise. The living room. Being brave as always, I quickly turned on the hallway lights, then peeked into the living room, only for my heart to almost stop. Outside, on the balcony, a tall, slim figure with a massive disturbing grin observed me. He stood there, his head leaning to one side, like that of a puppy, after he saw that I noticed him. I was paralyzed by fear when his grin grew larger, and he slowly pressed himself against the window, making more of his physical features much clearer. He seemed humanoid in form, having a slender human-like torso. He had two wide, thin shoulders, leading to two extremely long and thin arms. His legs seemed to mirror the form of his arms. Abnormally long and slender, his neck seemed almost human in a disturbing way, while his head was anything but human. He had this almost cartoon-like oversized grin with massive teeth. 
grey eyes with clearly visible veins bulging out of his face, and a heavily scarred nose that reminded me of Chris Walker from Outlast. In retrospect, you couldn't reasonably blame me for thinking I was just dreaming or hallucinating. However, there was something off. I wanted to go the child's route, storm my grandma's room and cry myself out about the freshly discovered monster, but I did not dare to look away from it. With some courage, I turned to face the direction my grandma's room was in, then quickly turned back to whatever this thing was. He slowly lifted one of his arms, revealing a long, spindly hand that honestly reminded me more of a spider than of a human appendage. The fact that his fingernails were adorned by long, yellowish fingernails did not help. He lifted his finger against the glass window, tapping three times before pointing at me. He then pointed into the direction of my grandma's room, shushing at me. He tapped three times again, leaving some kind of black mud on the window. I passed out and fell unconscious shortly after. When I woke up, I was in the local hospital, surrounded by doctors, nurses, and my grandma. A tube was connected to my arm, slowly pumping blood into my veins. I tried to explain what happened, but the doctors quickly brushed it off as the delusions and hallucinations of a dehydrated mind. I was given medication and allowed back home after enough fluid had been pumped into me. I was almost inclined to believe the doctor's explanation on what I saw, but when we returned home, I saw that the black mud was still on the window, just like it was when I passed out. This made me wary, and for good reason. I never forgot the noise of the tapping. It felt distinct and threatening. More so did I never forget the amount. He tapped three times, and my first encounter with him was two years ago. Ever since, I constantly see him stalk me in some way or another. I find claw marks on random wooden furniture, get random goosebumps whenever passing the living room, and constantly feel like I'm being watched by something. For the last two years, this mud man, as I've come to call him, has been stalking me in ways no human could. I find tiny drops of black mud in my closet, and occasionally see a shape similar to his in the corner of my eye. I have tried to do research on this entity, but all I got were results for the Slenderman and the Grossman, which is an ancient German folktale about a tall, slender figure that kidnaps children. No one wants to believe me thinking I just have some brain trauma or unsolved illusions since I passed out. I have no ways to find out what is going on or how to defend myself. And we are getting closer to June, the month I first saw the mud man. I'm afraid. The last few months we repeatedly found deep claw marks and drops of black mud on our windows and balcony door. My grandma believes this to be some sort of animal. She doesn't believe my story and neither does she show any interest in the mud. But due to being scared that it's a burglar, I at least managed to convince her to repeatedly swap out the locks. I don't think that that'll be enough. We are closing in on the third tap. The mud man wants inside and I doubt I'll be able to stop him. I am spending this night wary of my surroundings, to type down this post, to warn you all, to inspire you to prepare yourself before he arrives, and I am certain that he will, maybe not today or tomorrow, but eventually, he will. I can hear him clawing at the lock, tapping on the windows, never investigate, do not let him in. You may wish me luck for the remainder of my time, but I do not suppose it will be of any use. He'll be here soon.